Hi guys, welcome back to NASA's Tread. So today on the channel, we're learning how to make this beautiful strap gown with side gathers. If it's something you're interested in learning how to make, keep watching and let's get started. So I've gone ahead to fold my pattern paper into two because I'll be drafting this out first before I cut on my main fabric. And I went ahead to rule a line at that point, which will serve as my starting point. It means it's going to also serve as my shoulder line. So from that point there, I placed my tape minus four inches. Okay. So depending on how deep you want yours to be, you can use minus five or minus four. Okay. So I decided to use minus four for mine because I didn't want this to be too deep. And from that point, I'm marking out my boss point. All right. So my boss point is 10 inches. I just went ahead to mark that at three cardinal points. I'm marking my under boss point. I'm just simply replicating what I did for the bus point by marking it at three different points so that by the time I make a rule, I rule this out. It's going to be straightened. And I'm marking my um, half length, which is 16 inches. I'm just marking this at three points exactly. So go ahead and do the same for yours. Now, like I said earlier, if you want to, you want yours to be more deepened, okay, go ahead and use five inches for your uh, measurements go ahead and start off with five inches that means you minus five inches from your tape before you start taking all that measurement now the reason for this is because it is an off shoulder okay so you need to minus that area from it okay so i'm going ahead to mark my hip point for this now for this um gown this gown we're making uh i would not be cutting the top separate and the skirt part of it separate i'll be doing the cutting together so i'm just drafting everything together as you can see i'm just trying to draft everything together so i want to measure my full length right so what i want for my full length is 18 inches but as you know we are meant to add allowance for this okay now this gown the gathers i'll be adding to this gown will not have um, there will be no gathers at the edge that's at the down part of it but rather at the sides of it so you're going to see what i'm talking about by the time we finish making this all right so from the first video you have like a little understanding of what i'm talking about so i'm just ruling out that line there so because i'll be hemming this at the edge i just added my one inch extra allowance so i'll go ahead to label those marks i made that is my bust point my under bust point my waist my hip point and then the full length of this all right so we have that all down so the next measurement we want to take is our armhole measurement so i will still place the tape the way i placed it before remember i used minus four and i'll mark my armhole measurement at three cardinal points now my armhole is seven inches to get this just go ahead to divide your round bus by six and then add 1.5 inch to whatever answer you get at the end of the day so we have our lines all out i just went ahead to label this ch which is um chest all right so the next thing i want to do is to mark my shoulder now my shoulder measurement is 14 inches divided up by two i have 7.5 inches all right so from the shoulder point because i don't want this to be too open along uh, around the neckline sorry i went in from that point by one inch okay um i will actually i'm actually going to adjust this at times uh, later on all right but i just went in by one inch then on the chest line i just made, used my round boss measurement divided by four and then i made my connection with a curve right there so the next thing I want to do is to measure out my dart positioning. So what I'm going to do is to take my boss pan measurement. That's the distance from one nipple to the other. For mine is seven inches. I divided that by two. I got 3.5 and I added one inch to that. So I'm simply marking four inch this. Okay. So the 0 0.5 inch I'm using is actually my allowance for my darting. Okay. So I went ahead to mark it on my boss point, my under boss point, and then on the waistline, the waist point, sorry, or the half length. Then um, the dart is not going to extend to the hip area. So I'm just marking the length where I want my dart to stop. So I came down from my waist area by five inches. All right. So I'll just use my rule and then make this connections, connect everything I have here in a straight line.
So I've gone ahead to connect this together in a straight line. Then on the waist area, I'll be going in and out on both sides by half of an inch. Okay, this is just to give um, the bust that area a little more fitting. So on the bust point, I'll be coming down by one inch. Now, this is because uh, that is not meant to extend to the bust point. That is not meant to get to where your nipple is positioned. So I went down from that um, the bust point by one inch and i marked it down okay i'm sorry while doing this i had like three different markers and they were all disturbing me okay so at the point i had to use a pencil to do this so i want to show you how i'm going to connect my dots so that's why i zoomed this inside i do i zoom this in so that we have a perfect view okay so I'm just going to connect this. I hope you can see this clearly. I'm uh, using the pens. I'm really sorry for this. I promise in the next video where we're having a pattern, I will definitely have new markers to use. Okay. And I promise they will not be faint. So I just I'm going ahead to mark this down from the point where I took my half inch. I marked to the point I came down by one inch from the bust point. And I'm doing the same thing for the other point, okay? So after making that connection, I just connected it to the end where I want this to end, all right? So I hope you can see this clearly. This is what we have at the end of the day, okay? This is what it's meant to look like by the time you finish drafting out your darts. So now we can start um, taking our other body measurement. That's the horizontal body measurement after doing drafting our dart okay so we start with our bust divide your round bust by four whatever you have mark that out okay so later on we'll be adding our allowances so we're just using our normal body measurements for now okay and do the same thing for your under bust divide by four whatever you have there go ahead and mark it out all right then for the waistline do the same thing divide your round waist by four mark it down and also add the dart allowance okay so the dart allowance we took i'm taking for i took for mine sorry is one inch i went ahead to mark that down for my round hip i went ahead to do the same thing my round hip divide by four and i mark it down okay so for the knee area i'm just using my waist equivalent that's simply adding one inch to my waist equivalent now my round waist is 30 divided by four i have 7.5 so if i use 7.5 and add one inch to that i have 8.5 inch okay so that's what i'll be using for my round hip another way to oh, sorry my round knee another way to get this is also by removing six inches from your normal waist sorry your normal hip measurement and then divide it by four all right so i've done that mark that i hope you understand everything i'm saying okay so i want to add my allowances so i'm starting my allowances from the armhole area okay so i want to use a stitching allowance of one and a half inch for yours can decide to use more now this is bent on your fabric okay i'll be using a fabric that i'm using a crepe fabric for this video so i don't think using too much of fabric is good like using too much allowances it will not tell well by the time i finish making this okay so i've gone ahead to add my one inch of an allowance everywhere so on the neckline area you can decide to just connect it or not okay so but for now we'll be doing um, a temporal neck measurement so we're just using the temporal neck measurement you will see why i said it is temporal we're just taking a temporal neck measurement because it is more like an off shoulder for this it doesn't need to have a shoulder at all whether small big or medium okay but i just marked this temporal neck measurement for now i'll be cutting this out later so um our advice if you want to do the same thing or wait for later everything just depends on you okay but i just marked that down now what i actually i just wanted a template for what i'll be using later that was why i marked it out okay so I wanted um, for the neckline, you can use whatever. It can be a C, it can be a deep V. It can also be a sweetheart neckline, depending on what you want, okay? So I just marked um, marked my depths for what I want. I ensured it didn't get to my bust point because I didn't want my breast to be showing, any part of my breast to be showing. And then I marked a neck width of three inches and connected that together. 
So at this down part area forward this. Now, like I told, I said before, sorry, the gathers is not going to get to the edge of the gown. Okay, it will just be by the side. So I didn't want my gathers to start at the hip exactly. So I went down from my hip by two inches. And then I came in from the edge of like the midpoint, the folded edge of my pattern paper. All right. You can decide to make it more. You can decide to make it less. It, it, uh, the style actually depends on what you want. If you want yours to be um, a very uh, visible birth effect, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Like I always say, do what works for you. Right. So I'm just making my connection. With this okay you can see me struggling with my markers like i had all three of them down and they were not cooperating i'm really sorry about that they were all not cooperating at a point it got so frustrating i had to drag 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 them on the paper for them to at least give me if, even if, even if they were faint lines i was i just wanted to see something so it was just quite frustrating while doing this all right, so I've gone ahead to make my connections connected everywhere together for what I need. Okay, so they were all, all not cooperating. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to zoom this in so you see the connection I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what we have at the end of the day after I had finished connecting my lines together. I really hope you can see this. Okay, they were not so bright, but they're not so bad either. So don't forget, you can decide to start your um, your gathers from the hip point exactly. I think starting it from that point to give it um, a little more flay, to make it look more beautiful, elegant, okay? At a point, I wanted to switch mine, but I already made the decision from the onset and I didn't switch, okay? So I'll go ahead to cut out this piece so that we can work on our neckline properly and have what we need for this okay so you can see this is what we have now okay so i went ahead to add half of an inch at the top with that will be for my stitching allowance at that end all right then for the from the armhole area i went in by half of an inch like i said earlier i was going to go in a little more to give this a little fitting around that area so that it's not falling off. Even if I'll be tying this around the neck, I don't want this to be too out of it. So I went ahead to cut that out after making that mark. So I'll just cut it out and show I trace it out properly. Okay, so we have it looking like this. I'm just going to cut that out temporarily. Now you can see what I'm talking about for our our dress we don't need anything showing here okay so we're going to work on our neckline now so from the point i marked i'm going to make a curve down to that end now from the depth of the neck i marked initially i'll make a curve down to the other end where i marked okay so my marker wasn't really cooperating so that's just what i wanted so at this point you can decide to make um a c curve decide to use um a v neck you can decide to use um whatever neck pattern you want a sweetheart neck anything you think befits you whatever you think you you enjoy wearing because i feel making dresses it should be something you feel comfortable wearing so it should be what you want all right so i went ahead to just trace that out okay so mine has like this little v effect i was i was i wanted it to have not like so deep v it shouldn't be too pronounced but it should just be there okay so this is what we have and i went ahead to place this on another paper pattern paper this is to cut out the back and for this i left um an allowance of one and a half inch and then pinned it down now my allowance is simply for my zip i'll be adding a zip to this okay so that's what my allowance is for my allowance is for my zip i'm just extending the line i drew for my allowance out there okay you can see this is what we have at the end of the day this is what it looks like this is what our 
paper looks like, right? So that's the allowance there. So the difference between the back and the front is just the neckline and the zip allowance, okay? So I'll go ahead and trace other parts of this out. I'll trace out, sorry, I'll trace out the back part of this using my front part so that I can go ahead and work on my neckline and other area, the zip area of this. So I've done that, okay? So what I want to do is to get my neck depth. Now, this is already an off shoulder, okay? So no matter how you want to do this, the neck is not going to be hanging you around the neck, okay? So, but it doesn't need to be too deep, all right? But you can decide on what works for you, what works better for you, what's suitable for you or what you want, okay? So for me, I just went down from that point by one and a half inch for my neck depth, okay? That's the neck depth of the back. So if you want yours to be more, you want yours to be higher, you can go ahead and use that. But for me, I used one and a half for my neck depth, my back neck depth. So I'm just using my curve rule to make this connection. Okay, you can see me working with my pencil. That was because my rule wasn't, my, sorry, my markers were all disturbing me. Okay, I know I've been saying it, but they were very bad. So I just, I'm just going to, trace out this point so we'll see our neckline you can see this is what we have okay so i just use the simple c around that area now for the zip allowance area for our zip not to have any form of bulge now remember i said i used one and a half for the zip allowance so for our zip not to have any form of bulge around the waist area i'll be going in by half of an inch around the waist area now ensure you're watching this properly. This is so as to remove bulge from um, the zip area. Now you can use this pattern for your um, dresses, your normal dresses, your blouses, your tops, as long as you're adding a, a zip to it so that it will not have any form of bulge at that end, okay? So I'm just going to extend that out to the other side. That's simply what I'm doing. After making, I'm just making my connection and then I'll extend it out to the both sides. Just watch properly what I'm doing so you're not confused while doing this out yourself. Okay, so you can see. So by the time we cut this out, I'm just going to cut this out, okay? By the time we cut this out on our fabric and place them together, you're going to see um, the allowance we removed from that end. And by the time you fix the, your zipper, there will be no form of bulging at that pair, okay? So this is what the front and back looks like. We have it like this, okay? This is our back piece, all right? So I'm just going to write on this, okay? So for the back piece, we're meant to have two of it. Remember, we have our zip allowance, so times two. So cut, that means cut two of it and for the front cut in a fold, okay? Remember to cut your front piece in a fold. So what we want to do next is to cut out our piece, okay? So this is a fabric I'll be working with. It is a crepe fabric. You can see it is very um, pretty, has a very beautiful print and I have three yards of this. I'll be using this for this. So I've gone ahead to cut out the piece I need. This is my back piece. Remember I said cut two pieces of the back. So I've gone ahead to cut out my back piece. All right. Then um, I also went ahead to cut out the other pieces, but I want to show you what I'm, what I was saying earlier. Okay. So I'm placing my back piece together, right? So you can see that allowance we took out, the half inch we took out. You can see the, the difference it made on this. Okay. That's the essence of it. So this is the front piece. I've also gone ahead to cut this out. I cut it out in a fold. So remember I said the back should be two piece and the front should be in a fold. Do not forget that. It is quite important for you to not forget. So I've just gone ahead to take off my um, pattern paper and show you what the front looks like. This is what we have. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut out facing for my neckline 
So because this is a strap, I do not want to add, add sleeves to this, but you can decide to add sleeves to yours. That means if you're adding sleeves to yours, there's no need for the strap, okay? But for me, I didn't want to add sleeve to this. So I went ahead to cut out my facing. I used a piece of fabric. I folded it into two, okay? So I'm starting with my front part. I'll just place this on it, okay? Ensure the folded part of your front and the folded part of the material you want to use for your facing are in the same direction, okay? So because the fabric I'm using has um, um, very flowery prints, it's going to be quite um, deceiving for the eyes to see it properly, okay? I'm just going to pin it down and cut, okay? So you want to ensure, okay, take note of this. You want to ensure your facing gets to the armhole area of this so that you can turn not just your neckline, but also the armhole area, okay? Ensure it turn, you can turn not just your neckline, but also the armhole area, okay? So I just went ahead to mark the length of the facing I want. It should not be too much. It, um, it should not be too long and ensure it is not short. So what I just marked was four inches from my neckline, okay? So that, that is like um, the length I wanted it to end and I'm just going to trace this out. And after cutting this, I'll do the same for my back piece, okay? So I've gone ahead to dart my pieces. I've darted the front. I'm just going to show you this is what it looks like. Okay, just the same thing I did on the paper. I just followed the same process and then I placed my dart on my fabric. Okay, so I have two darts in front and then one one on each piece of the back. All right. I know I didn't dart the back while I was cutting it out, but I've gone ahead to do the same thing. Remember, I added my dart allowance. Okay, also. So I want to turn my neckline but before i do that i have to make my strap because i want my strap the end of my strap to be hidden in that area okay so i went ahead to cut out a piece which measures two inches in width and then 15 inches in length so you can decide to make yours longer make it thicker make it smaller it depends on you okay so i'll go ahead and fold this this way go to the machine and fold it this way okay so i've done that this is what I have after I did that. I actually double stitched on top of it. And you will need four pieces of this, okay, to place in the different points for you to stitch on top. Okay. So let's place this in. in let's place this around the area we need so we can turn this out with our facing. Okay. You can see this is what it looks like. Like I said, you can make your smaller or make it bigger. So I'll bring in the fabric now. I'll place it this way, okay. What I actually placed is the front part of my fabric, all right? And I'll bring in the straps I want to place for the front part, place it at the different points where I want them to be. You need your pins while you're working on this because you don't want this to be moving about. So ensure you pin it down, all right? Then I'll place it this way. After placing it that way, I'll bring in my facing and then place my facing on it also the front part so you're simply placing placing the fab the, sorry the facing and the fabric front facing front okay that's what you're doing and then you're placing your straps in between them that's at the point where you're supposed to attach your sleeve if you're attaching the sleeve okay so i'm going to put that down on both ends for my front piece okay pin it down so that it will not move while i'm stitching this later on okay and then I'll go ahead to stitch on this. So I'll just make my stitch from this point, from the armhole area down to my neckline and then to the other armhole area, okay? Just simply stitching on this with half of an inch, right? Then for my back piece, I'll go ahead and do the same thing. I'm that this is what I have, okay? I also went ahead to iron this out. Now, uh, one advice I will give is to ensure you hem this by the time you finish turning, okay, hem the edge of your facing so that it doesn't move, all right? See, this is what we have for this at the end of the day. It's looking nice. It's coming in um, nice gradually, okay? So we want to join the front and back together, all right? So I'm just showing you the front. This is what it looks like after turning this over with the facing. You can see where my straps are, okay? They came out nicely. So I'll bring in my back piece. 
and place this front facing front with each other all right ensure that matching at the at every point that meant to match around the arm area at the edge make sure everywhere is matching perfectly that's why you need to cut this accurately so you make no mistakes and i'll bring in the second piece also place it in the same way front facing front all right place it the same way front facing front okay and go ahead and use the allowance to stitch it down remember i used the one and a half inch for my allowance so that's what i used i've stitched it down right now this is what it looks like and after stitching it down after stitching it down i went ahead to close a little part of the zip area okay that's the back part and then i went ahead to hem the down part of this all right so we want to work on our ruffles now like i said ruffles is by the side it's not going to be all over the stress so we want to work on our ruffles to do this i'll simply take the measurement around the side area where i want my ruffles to sit okay so i'll just go ahead and take the measurement around that area for me after taking my measurement okay i'll just go ahead and take the measurement around that area all right so after taking my measurement i have 25 inches around that area on both ends okay so you can decide to double this make it two and a half make it two like times two times 2.5 times three inches depending on the volume of gathers or ruffles you want on that area okay for me i just went ahead to do mine by 2.5 inches because i didn't have much fabric also consider your fabric and then i went ahead to cut out um the two piece i'll need for this okay so you can decide to make yours longer like the width of it can be longer the length can be more than mine all right depending on the volume you want but i went ahead to cut uh, mine with a width of 11 inches one inch extra will be for the hemming okay i remember i said i used um 2.5 i times mine by 2.5 okay so i'll pick through that this is what i have on this okay so i would advise you use a gather stitch a loose stitch for yours okay my machine was having uh, was a bit faulty so i couldn't do a gather stitch all right but i'm going to be gathering mine around this manually so i went ahead to pin the edges of my piece i want to use for my ruffles i went ahead to pin it around the area i want to place it and i'll go ahead to gather this manually okay so i've done that this is what it looks like after i finish doing this okay this looks very pretty okay it looks very pretty I went ahead to do that you can see the space in between where i didn't place my ruffles okay it looks this way if you want to place it all over it simply depends on your choice and after doing that i went ahead to i went ahead to fix my zipper which is the last thing i did for this video now if you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you watch this video to the end and you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so be notified whenever I post a new video. Okay. Thank you for watching my videos and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.